Hi, my name is Dr. Asha Shipman. I am the director of Hindu Life and Hindu chaplain for Yale University. And this is a cooking class run by our chaplain's office. I am here with my mother, Kay Srinivasan, and we're in my childhood home in our kitchen. And this is a place where I would watch my mother cook when I was growing up. So it's exciting to be able to bring this recipe to you with my mom, very special. Uh, and one of the dishes that we're going to feature today, or the dish we're going to feature today, is chana masala. So it is a chickpea curry from India. Um, and actually what we'll do is, Mom, I thought we would talk about a little bit about um, this dish and uh, when you learned how to cook it. Yes, uh, it's one of, it was one of the first dishes that I learned to cook because it's really very simple. Mm. <laughs> and um, I learned to cook it really uh, after I got married because um, I married a vegetarian, so I was busy looking for vegetarian recipes. And uh, chickpeas were available in cans, and that was about the best option at that time, especially when I was just beginning. And I really recommend this to all beginner cooks. Okay, wonderful. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you the ingredients that you'll need to cook chana masala. So you will need to have chickpeas, and we have four 15 and a half ounce cans of chickpeas. You will need a 28, count, uh, 28 ounce can of Italian plum tomatoes. These are peeled. Uh, you will need Worcestershire sauce. You will need a large onion over here. And then you'll need a uh, half an inch piece of peeled and chopped ginger. Here's the ginger root. Uh, you'll need a, uh, an 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. Oh, did we bring the tomato sauce? No, nope, no tomato sauce. So we'll get it. Um, you'll need 3 tablespoons of vegetable oil. You will need a teaspoon of black mustard seeds, a teaspoon of, black, of cumin seeds, one dry red hot pepper if you like it hot. You can skip that. Uh, you could also add in garlic, two cloves of garlic, but that's optional, and we're not going to add it in ours. Um, sauteed or roasted cashews, so over here. And then um, a can of small white potatoes, also optional, but I highly recommend. Um, you'll need turmeric powder and garam masala. You will need, um, if you want, you could have unsweetened coconut, shredded coconut. Um, a fresh green bell pepper. Um, you could also use chopped cilantro. So those, that would be a garnish. So these are the ingredients, the key, oh, and the curry leaf too. So you have curry leaves. So these are the main ingredients. And uh, you will also need a pot. Now this is a five and a half quart pot um, that my mom uses to cook the chickpeas. Um, you could use something bigger, but probably not something smaller because the seeds will need space to do their popping. Okay, so before you can make the chickpea curry, the chana masala, you have some work to do the night before. So mom, what do we have to do the night before we want to make chana masala? We have a very important piece of work to do, which actually could be uh, equal to the importance of actually cooking the chickpeas. They have to be drained and marinated. It's very important to do it at least a day or a night ahead. And you do it this way. You, uh, you do not rinse out the chickpeas. You open the can carefully and then you pour out the liquid that you find inside. It's a lot of liquid. <laughs> it's a lot of liquid. And then you open it up and you take most of the sauce and you, uh, again, you could make it, generally I think two th tablespoons is enough. Two tablespoons. The next move, after you've spooned in the sauce, is to just shake it and just turn the can a little bit. Just not enough to sort of let it spill out, but just enough for all the chickpeas to gently soak. Then you put the lid back on again and put it in the refrigerator for overnight.
Good morning, everyone. It is the next day, and we have marinated our chickpeas, and we are starting in on cooking the chickpea curry or chana masala here with my mom. Hi, mom. You ready? Hi there. <laughs> yes. Okay. The oil is heating with a four tablespoons of oil. Okay. In a big flat bottom pot. I'm about to put in the spices. First we'll put in mustard seed. I think that was a teaspoon of mustard yeah, seed. Yeah, a teaspoon of mustard seed. That should heat up pretty soon. And I noticed that you're on a medium, covering. On a medium heat. I'm covering medium. it because the mustard seeds will pop. Right. And as soon as they get halfway through popping, I'll put in the cumin seeds. Okay. And it usually takes about 20 to 30 seconds yes. to get them going. It depends on how warm your oil is. Yes. Okay. Yes. So while they're popping. They're beginning to pop now. Yep. You have to cover them. This is to, to flavor the oil. That's right. Okay. And what did you just put in the cumin? I just put in the cumin. Yeah. Okay. So the There we go. Okay. And what's next, Sasha? Okay. So the next thing is that while the mustard seeds are still popping, add cumin, add red pepper, and garlic if you're doing it. Okay. So we are not, not using garlic, garlic, but today, but here is a very healthy red pepper. Oh boy. Okay. okay, we should be ready to okay. add. And the next thing is to ginger. add the ginger. Yep. Ginger. And, and onion. onion. Yep. Very good. Now this is also where we would add cashews, because we're going to add cashews. Yep, we are going to add cashews. Throw these. So the thing about the onions is that we want to make sure that they cook enough to soften and the onions should become translucent but not, uh, not burn. So here come our roasted cashews. Yeah. We'll leave, leave some for garnish. Okay. Looks good. Smells really good. <laughs> Now, if you're not a huge onion fan, as these cook, yeah. they actually aren't going to be as oniony as you can ima you might imagine, because you're going to cook them down into being a translucent soft onion. So you could avoid using onions for garlic garnish if you're not a huge onion fan, but they really this recipe does do better with onions. So. Now, do you okay. put? Okay, we are getting ready to have our turmeric okay. powder. Now, do you, are the, do the onions get more translucent than this? They Is don't have to. They will, they will gradually cook down in any case. Okay. It all depends on how you like your onions. Mm -hmm. So if you want them less sharp, cook them more. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but if it doesn't bother you, then yeah. it's good. good. <laughs> okay, so here we go. The next is to add turmeric. And so we're going to add a half a teaspoon of turmeric, mm -hmm. and then we're going to add masala powder. Mm -hmm. And we had two teaspoons of garam masala powder, or if you can, can't find that, and you can find sambar powder, you can yeah. do that. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And, uh, let's okay. see. and then we stir and fry for two minutes to roast the spices. Right. They're getting really flavorful and colorful. I'm going to add another tablespoon of oil. Add another tablespoon of oil? Okay. There we go. 
Now, what are you looking for that tells you you should add more oil? If it's beginning to sort of uh, the spices start to get, and this is uh, beginning to sort of stick to the bottom. Oh, I see. Okay. If you have a non-stick pan, do you need to use less oil? You can oil? use that. You can use that. Okay. This is where we should be adding the Okay, so tomato. the next thing is potatoes. Potatoes, right. Yep, we're going to add potatoes. And when we add the potatoes, we have to stir them so yes. that they're coated completely yes. with the turmeric and the spices. Right. And you can turn down the heat from medium if you feel like things are getting a little too hot. Mm -hmm. And you can even add a little of your liquid. Okay. So this is the tomato sauce that you can add right now, a little bit, yeah. if you're feeling like things are sticking too much and you want <laughs> to avoid that. See, that's perfect. It still allows the potatoes to take on the turmeric. Mm -hmm. okay. So here, um, the plan is to cook the, t the potatoes so that they're slightly brown. Mm -hmm. That way they're really taking in the flavor of the spices. Right. And I noticed that you took the, we had the can of small white potatoes, and I noticed that you would uh, cut them into quarters yes. because yes. that way there's more surface area, sure. better to uh, take in those spices. Right. Okay. Um. Okay, so these are browning. The next thing to do is to stir in the chopped tomatoes and then add curry leaves. Yes. Now the tomatoes um, can be cut up as you'd like. Yes. Um, you, and then the curry leaves, when you are putting the curry leaves in, what is your suggestion in terms of, like, do you put them in whole? Do you break them up? Generally for this, uh, I break up. Some, and I'll be adding some for garnish later. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to be adding in. Okay. So time to add in the tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. And you have just... I have a little bit of uh, yeah. coconut. Okay. I'm going to add in coconut. Unsweetened shredded coconut. Okay. And, and then you're going to add, add the can of tomatoes. Adding in all the plum tomatoes. Some of them you chopped and some you didn't. Yes. Okay. Okay, so now it's time to add curry leaves. Yes. You have a nice spray of them right there. I certainly do. Now we don't need all of these, but this just shows you how to put them in. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> now are you going to also break up some? No, these are, these are small, so I won't break oh, okay. them up. And again, you treat them like bay leaves. They give flavor. This is something that if you didn't want to eat them, you wouldn't have to, but if you did want, if you did eat them, it wouldn't matter. They smell yes. so good. Yes. If you like curry leaves, yes. they smell amazing to have them fresh like this. Okay, Incredible. and they're all just about ready for yeah. the chickpeas. Yep, okay. And the sauce has got really thick too. Yes. Okay. Nice. Okay, one can. Second can. Stir. And the chickpeas are all nicely marinated. They look good.
So now you're coating the chickpeas yeah. with the sauce. Yeah. And then the next thing to do is to cover it and let it come to a slow boil. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And then are you going to add more tomato sauce? I will be adding more of the sauce. Um, after it comes after, to a boil? Yes. Okay. Okay. In fact, you can even add more of the sauce from the can of the tomato can. Okay. Right. And that's going to happen after it comes to a boil or before? No, nope. right now. Right oh. now. Okay, right now. Right now, and here goes the lid. Okay. Great. And now you're going to change the temperature. You're putting um, it up yes. a little bit yes, to I medium am. high. Yes. I began on uh, medium. Mm -hmm. Took it down while we added the spices. Okay. And now it goes up again. Okay. Good. All right. Now, you're going to bring it to a boil, yes. and then are you going to... And then I'm going to just let it simmer. Okay. And because we add potatoes, it'll be about a 25-minute to half-hour simmer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so now we have our chickpea curry in the serving container, and Mom, you have a nice garnish on this. Why don't you talk about the garnish, and then also about what you could eat alongside chana masala. Okay, well this particular recipe for chana masala has enough gravy in it that you can eat it with rice and yet it is also suitable to, to be eaten with different kinds of Indian breads. Mm -hmm. And here we have chapatis, we have naan and uh, again uh, rice. So you can eat it with almost anything. And it'll taste better tomorrow. <laughs> and most of the garnish that you see here has been used in actually uh, cooking the recipe. So uh, it's all on hand. And uh, So what do you have? You have on top of the chana masala, you have placed... Well, I have the uh, green pepper for garnish. Mm -hmm. At this, uh, for this recipe, I didn't add green pepper, though it could be added. I use uh, red pepper instead. And we also have coriander and we have the um, onion, onion, which we have used in the recipe. Okay. Yes. And then I noticed that you have steamed basmati rice and you yes. have a garnish on the rice. basmati rice. Rice, I again decorated with tomato, which we have uh, used in this chana masala, mm -hmm. and the cashew nuts as well. And this recipe is more South Indian in many ways because it has used cashew nuts. Mm -hmm. Now if it had been a North Indian recipe it might have used almond for one mm -hmm. thing and it might but it would definitely have used tomato no problem and um, it, it can be eaten with almost anything. Okay and I think that um, I have observed that chana masala is usually to me, more flavorful the next day. This is a perfect picnic lunch yeah. because you can make it ahead and yes, it travels well. Okay, so this is it everybody. I hope that you try the recipe and uh, enjoy it. Uh, again, the seasonings can vary depending on the level of spice that you like. Yes, you can. Thank you, Mom. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, for me too.